Hey friends, it's me, your pal Kelly Zanikas. Welcome to episode number 39 of It'll Be Fine. I think. I'm not sure anymore. Um, but we're still a socially distant baking food chat show. I hope you're doing good. I am genuinely glad you're joining us today. And um, on today's show, I'm joined by the very funny and the super cool Rush Kazi. And Rush today is showing me how to make the dessert. So the teacher becomes the student. I love it. Uh, we're making a fast and dirty trifle. You're in for a treat. This is so easy. You're gonna be amazed. Your mind's gonna be blown. Absolutely. Um, so I'm very glad you're here today. And did I mention it was Rush's birthday this week? Have I mentioned that, birthdays? Give Rush a shout out. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and guys, this episode was filmed a few weeks ago. The world was in a different place. Um, we weren't having the conversations we're now having. The very necessary, very overdue, uncomfortable conversations that I hope you're having now. So I just wanted to make you aware it's not brought up because just the wheelhouse was a bit different when we were filming. Um, and, um, you know, I don't know if things are going to be fine. I've, I've, I remain hopeful and I think we're at a good place, a good, a good starting point to actually see some change happen. And maybe you're going to do that through food. Maybe you'll do that through breaking bread with a friend and having conversations maybe you haven't had before. It's the power of food, how it brings us all together. I'm not going to cry. I read like water for chocolate. You can't cry when you're baking. It screws up the bake. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. need for this. Um, from what Rush told me, you're going to need instant cake mix. Okay. Uh, you're going to need some pop. You're going to add that to the batter to add some flavor. And uh, I picked up feisty cherry. Never had this before. I figured, you know, there's, you know, fruit in this because we also need Pie filling, I've gone with blueberry. Uh, but you can do cherry as well. That is totally fine. You need some instant chocolate pudding. So we've got instant chocolate pudding and uh, whipped topping. Uh, you can either get the stuff in the can. I'm gonna whip some up, do that myself. And then we're gonna start building this, guys. Oh my goodness. And you, you know what we're gonna put it in today? Or at least I am. I think Rush might be. I'm not 100% sure, but um, mason jar yeah <laughs> it's gonna make it cool and this way you know if, if you've got uh, maybe a socially distant barbecue to attend or uh, you're being mindful of a friend whose birthday it is you want to give a gift you can give them to them in a little mason jar there you are so uh, that's what you need let's let's see how this goes man <laughs> alrighty so I decided for this uh, instead of using like a cool whip sort of thing um, to make my own whipped cream, which I've done before on the show. It's been about 15 minutes and this thing is not, it's not setting. Uh, I don't know if you can see over my shoulder there. It's working. It's working. Um, so I'll give it a few more minutes. I remember the first time I did this, uh, it took a bit longer than I thought. So maybe my measurements are off. What I have done is I've done a cup of uh, whipping cream. Um, I've got a tablespoon of honey and like a teaspoon of powdered sugar and a teaspoon of um, lemon extract. I thought lemon might be good because we're doing like a dessert that has some berries in it. Um, but I don't know. My instant pudding that I did for this. Oh, you got it. Right. <laughs> nice. I'm going cherry. I'm going blueberry. 
Yeah. yeah, it'll work just as well. Work just as fine. I so, thought I had to go to the store tomorrow and like edit in this cherry can. <laughs> Be like magic. <laughs> yeah. So I ended up buying just like instant pudding cups. So totally works. Going with that. It all works. Love this is what I'm saying. This is like a lazy, easy trifle. The end result looks beautiful, but it's like. Yeah. Yeah. And for my pop, which I added to the batter when I was making the cake, I went with feisty cherry. Okay. Did you go with the right measurement though? That's the, did you make the cake already? I did make the cake already. I used, um, I, instead of doing the vegetable oil, I did pop. Yeah, that, so the thing is, you just use a can of pop instead of the vegetable oil or eggs. Okay. Yeah, right. I don't even use eggs. Yeah. Oh, yeah, but it, it's still the same volume of liquid. That's what it is. Right. Yeah. So I, what I did, because um, we actually didn't talk about that before, when I realized I was mixing it together, I was like, I think I just take out the wet stuff on the back, and I'll just use that for the pop. So. Yeah, well, the wet stuff usually includes the eggs, but 355 mils, the whole can, that's the exact measurement of the eggs and the oil. Gotcha. Okay, I that's, did half. So. Yeah, so, so, but like, we used a bottle and you like measured it to the amount that the oil was, I assume? Yeah, I did. That'll still work. That, that all works. So it's basically, if you didn't have like eggs, yeah, that, that's the thing. So I used a kind of like diet caffeine-free Coke. Right. Like a white cake mix, you can just like... Let, let's say you use like a ginger ale or like a diet ginger ale. That was my husband. Hello. Hey, um, <laughs> but yeah, like a, like a diet ginger ale if you're yeah. like trying to get less sugar because like the cake mix already is like filled with sugar, right? Yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah. So it's like you can make all these varieties. Like if you get like a cherry vanilla mixed cake, like cherry chip cake with ginger ale. That's what I did last time. It was awesome. Yeah. It was just like oh, maybe and like the like ginger ale I had had cranberry juice in it already, like like a pre mixed yeah. ginger ale cranberry yeah. can. Yeah. So it was like this really pink cake. It was beautiful. <laughs> well, that was my thinking when I saw this with the cherries. I thought because I'm doing something with blueberry, maybe it'll just add a little. I took a sip of this. Uh, I won't ever buy feisty cherry. <laughs> I do, you know, I used to like uh, vanilla Coke. Right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah and when, I, when I was a kid or when I was in high school, I was buying like diet vanilla Coke a lot. Okay. Like that was like, lunch is... High school kids are dumb. You know what I mean? It's like, oh yeah, I'm just gonna just gonna have a diet vanilla coke for lunch. It's like, that's not a lunch, but okay, no. that's what I was doing. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it's just like I never liked cherry coke. Just even regular cherry coke, I didn't like. Yeah, this side, uh, this is not. I haven't had a cherry coke in years, and now I know why. Um, it's disgusting. <laughs> Hopefully, it'll work in this. I mean, it's just more sugar and another fruity flavor, possibly. It can't go bad in a cake batter that's already mostly sugar, I hope. Exactly. Yeah. And for my cake batter, uh, just for those watching at home, I went with chocolate fudge. Super moist. Ooh, I did. Uh, <laughs> what did you have? Devil's Food. No name brand. Baby, you can go as cheap as you want and have it taste yeah. delicious. Yeah. As long as you do all the steps that we're about to do. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> my baking while I've been home. Like you, you have someone in your house. I got, I got nobody. So I have to share or I'd be like the size of my apartment. I'd be... I mean, my sister lives downstairs oh, nice. in this uh, apartment building complex and uh, she was not doing so well. So I was just making her food. Oh, damn. Uh, so, I mean, like, aside from the bummer part, like, it works out for me in the sense that, like, here, I made way too much casserole. I mean, brown people are not supposed to eat casserole. So, I need to give it away as much as I can. <laughs> <laughs> Casseroles are so... What is your go-to casserole? Oh, well, I mean, I think you might get right now that I like doing things quick and fast and, like, lazily. So, my favorite casserole is... Um, which, by the way, I never started making casseroles until five years ago. It was like the first time I had to like Google how to make a casserole because I didn't grow up with casseroles, right? Like I grew up with lots of curries, yeah. uh, rice, you know, rice cooker always going. There's always some sort of rice dish and a, like a, a curry veg dal yeah. and a curry meat. Like that's usually how things went. Sometimes eggs, whatever. Um, so my go-to casserole is a pretty simple open can dump situation or open box dump situation, but it's super fast. It was great for weeknights, because like, I mean, you're a comedian, I'm a comedian. 
and like we both did like other work, right? So like I'd come from my day job, come home, have like an hour or two to myself before I had to go out again. Yeah. This was great because like you'd open up like a box of like rotini or penne, just like mm -hmm. uh, one of those, I guess more like the box versions instead of like the bags because then you don't have to measure it. So like one box of rotini, yeah. dump it into my casserole dish. Um, I do like a can of salmon, like this big, yeah. like can of salmon, dump that in there. Two cups of milk, uh, two cups of any sort of shredded cheese. So usually mozzarella, sometimes like cheddar, whatever. Um, five cloves of garlic, a can of crushed tomatoes, okay. just, and just whack that into the oven at 400 degrees for 50 minutes. And during that time, you take like seasoned breadcrumbs and some oil and get it ready for like a topping. So yeah. the last 10 minutes, just put it on. Like when you get to 50, put it on like the topping and then like broil it. And then you have this casserole and you never had to boil the pasta. Jer, you're in my light. <laughs> Thanks, babe. <laughs> well, that's, yeah, that's super simple. Now, it tastes you, really good. Yeah. Are you able to eat a full meal before a set? Because I, when I went to a club, if I had a show at like Hawaii Bar or Absolute, I can't, I cannot eat before I perform. I can't eat directly before, but I, I can eat at home. Does that oh, make sense? Yeah. So if I come home, I'm usually ravenous by 5, 36 PM mm -hmm. and I need dinner. And usually the slow cooker or the air fryer or like that instant sort of casserole, like in an hour while I'm putting my makeup on, okay. it gets ready. Yeah. I can eat, floss, make sure there's not, nothing in my teeth and then go. Cause I can't eat at the venue. No. I cannot eat at the venue. No. People, there's people who eat at the venue. I'm like, aren't you worried about performing with like something in your teeth? You don't even eat at home before you do a show. It's, it's very light. I, I truly just, I, I want some water. I don't drink before a set. Um, yeah, I have to be sober and hungry. <laughs> that would be a good name for my special. I mean, it's just one of those, like, you really want that set. You know what I mean? Like, I am starving. I am sober. I am punishing myself. Like, it's just... <laughs> it's a weird method. But I have done some Doom shows of late where there are so many comics on the bill. I, I, was, I did a show the other night. I was, like, number 26 out of 35. I had what? wine. I had wine. I was, like, I need to, I need, I need to help myself with this. my question is who's watching a 35 comedian show is it just like a dip in dip out situation it's like five hours come in whenever you want it's absurd but i I've, I've been in a few rooms now where the number is above 30 and it's like i i can't i got i got stuff to do <laughs> is it an open mic because that kind of makes sense maybe um I will say a couple of them have been, but some of them have been booked. Wow, that's yeah. um, that's excessive. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like when Luau, when I was doing Laughter Luau like live in like in person, not on Zoom. Um, of course, the lineups could be up to like forty people, and that's just like a lesson in endurance and futility, basically for myself. Yeah. Like, can I do this? Can I suffer for this long hosting this goddamn show? Uh, but my online version is not like that. I capped yeah. it at eight people, maybe nine, just so I can get like a nice like Brady Bunch square on the Zoom. Yeah. But aside, like, I don't, I don't want more than that because I want to do other things. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and you also want to hold people's interest because doing shows in this fashion, it is very easy to check out, turn on your TV, like maybe read while you're listening and we're putting our heart and soul into what we're doing. And then someone at home is like, Oh yeah. Oh. And then just like leaves. Yeah. I got to play this level of candy crush. See ya. <laughs> no, I know. Cupcakes just in case I didn't want to make too much trifle. Oh yeah. my God. This Mason jar idea is freaking so smart. Like, yeah. I always just make a giant bowl of trifle and then like, oh, we got to eat trifle for a week. And it's just like, I don't think we need to do that. <laughs> yeah, no, this um, is a perfect idea. I had not washed out my, my cupcake thing, so I just did it in a pan and just have cut my squares, but it's come out super chewy and lovely. So the I want to try this cupcake. Do you want to try some before yeah. we even make a rifle? Like, For sure. okay. mm. It has like a candy type consistency almost. 
Like it's fluffy. Yep, very fluffy. But then, then you get like a weird like, like mine doesn't have any eggs at all. So like mine can be made vegan. Like that's actually a trick that I learned from a friend who's allergic to eggs. Okay. Um, and they're like gluten-free candied eggs. And um, you know who they are, but I don't want to mention their name. Mm -hmm. um, but I was like, this is brilliant because like they just buy like a gluten-free cake mix and then pour a can of Coke in there instead of eggs. I never, eggs never would have crossed my mind. Wow. Pita. Pita has a link to, I'm basically just eating this cupcake first, um, like the Buffer. entire, okay. we'll <laughs> I'm having it at breakfast and it's 3 p.m. So I think I'm going to just eat this. <laughs> when I make cupcakes, at, some of them always end up being a little burned compared yeah. to like the rest. Yeah. So I picked the ugly ones because this is what you want to use in your trifle because you can't just give a ugly cupcake to someone, right? Yeah. Uh, you see, there's like a there's like a little burnt edge. Obviously, don't put the burnt part in the cup, like the trifle. But you know what I mean. Yeah. Uh, oh, I think mine actually just fits perfect. Wait. So you want to like crush it up a little bit, or like break it apart. All right. To make your first layer. Yeah, we're just doing that. Super fun. It's fun. We're playing with our food, which we don't do enough as adults. <laughs> oh, I'm South Asian. I still eat with my hands. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I South Asian, say, so certain African type, type of like uh, yeah. countries, like Ethiopians for sure are going to be eating with their food. I mean, eating with their hands, eating yeah. with their food. <laughs> of course, they're eating their food. That's dumb. I was reading recently because my background is primarily Latvian. Um, and apparently it's a thing for Latvians to eat pizza with a knife and fork. And I'm just embarrassed by that fact. I mean, don't you do that with a really fancy thin crust pizza anyway? You try to pick it up, everything's gonna fall off. No, I try to make it like a sandwich. Like I make it like I fold it. Uncouth. <laughs> That's what I do. That's what I do. All right. Okay. I'm totally eating while I'm doing this. But yeah, this is my bottom layer. I used like two cupcakes for it. All right. Next layer is pudding. All right. Got that. I feel like I paid uh, an awful lot of money for a dessert that looks like this at Planta not too long ago. This big okay. vegan restaurant in Toronto. Uh, I love Planta. Thing. Yeah. I love uh, Planta too, but they had this chocolate terrarium dessert kind of like in the same fashion. It was uh, a lot of money. I made my uh, pudding thing in like a thing with a spout just to make it easier to pour. Oh, sweet. Okay, and I'm just going classic cup. Pudding cup. I hadn't bought pudding cups in a very long time prior to getting these yesterday. Oh yeah? Oh my gosh. Is this it's nostalgic or what? Yeah, that, buying a cake mix. Don't know when I last bought a cake mix. <laughs> this is awesome. All right. All right, so now you can see like the layer of pudding. Yep. So you've got a little bit more of that. And now, depending on how you want to do it, we can either do the pie topping or we yep. can do the whipped cream topping. I think the whipped cream topping first because then it divides the dark and light. I think so. Um, my whipped cream topping was a total fail. Made my own today. It didn't work today. I don't know why. Did you, what did you use? Like cream? I did whipping cream, sugar a little extract of, uh, I used lemon extract because I thought that would be good. Uh, I powdered sugar, honey in it. Did not work today. Just, no. Okay, I'm, gonna grab a, I'm gonna grab a couple of spoons out of can opener for the cherry. I just realized okay. I didn't have those things ready. In place of my failed whipped cream, I had Greek yogurt. It'll still work, I think. Is it sweetened? Um, no, but I'm gonna add honey to it. Okay. Oh, and then you have another layer. Yeah. If you like put the honey over the yeah. Greek yogurt. Oh, that'll work. I'm so mad. I was really like, I was really psyched to make whipped cream. Every time I would make whipped cream, I'm just super proud of myself because it's awesome to see it come together. Right. Day off today. I'm just like, well, I just use like a no-name brand, like Cool Whip. Oh, sweet. Okay. That stuff like stays like up. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
There are no soft peaks. Oh, so making a mess. What are you doing for your birthday this year? Any at-home quarantine plans? I think originally I wanted to have like, um, originally I wanted to have like a roast show of myself okay. before the quarantine started, obviously. Um, now it's like, I don't know what I'm going to do. My birthday's uh, pretty soon, I guess. Yep. Frick. <laughs> Coming up fast. <laughs> okay, our birthdays are close or? Mine is April 3rd. So oh, okay. I was I was early in the isolation for the the birthdays, and uh, the lovely Lisa Feingold Uber eats me a slice of cake for my birthday, which is very sweet of her. So nice. So so nice. So I appreciated that. And then my parents uh, stood outside my apartment building. I went down to meet them, and uh, they gave me some toilet paper. So <laughs> A good birthday. Oh, I like how this is looking. Right? It's a little messy on mine, but like, I'm not doing this for company right now, or else I would have like wiped off the rim or whatever. Yeah, and I've got the honey there on top, so. Awesome. A little extra. And then the next layer, since this is just like, usually when you have like a big trifle bowl, you do it twice. Right. But these are mason jars. I think we only need to do it one time. Absolutely. Now I got myself some Edie Smith cherry topping. Oh, you got the same brand. <laughs> Blueberry. Love awesome. it. Um, is Jeremy a big cook or is it is it all you doing the uh, he likes uh making a lot of like his grandma is um uh sorry, Tibetan background. Cool. And so he grew up eating a lot of Chinese food, but she's also from India, so he like because they have like Chinese and Tibetan people in India, so yeah. He grew up eating a lot of like East Asian and like South Asian dishes and a lot of soups and white folk food. Um, <laughs> so I let him make all the East Asian stuff because that's just like my sort of like, what's the word? Blind spot in cooking. Okay. Like I don't know how to make like. Yeah, it's on your wheelhouse. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's the stuff that he makes usually. That's sweet. And he'll make a wicked stir fry. Oh, so good. All right, so yeah, we take the pie topping and we put it directly into the thing, which is great because everything's just pre-made. Yeah. Right? I mean, if we wanted to make it even easier, we could have just like, uh, what you call, gotten like a pre-made cake. You know what I mean? That's true. Yeah, you could definitely do that. It was fun to do this though. It was like really nostalgic to get the Betty Crocker going. <laughs> Look how this looks. This is so pretty. Right? And it's like, it looks super pretty. It looks much more fancy than it is. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> oh, and this is like totally no stress. I love having dishes to do right now that just don't require a lot. But we're going to taste good. Yeah. Oh my God, it looks freaking beautiful. <laughs> like, <laughs> I've been doing it wrong. The most of the time that I've been making it, I've always been putting the like the cherry layer over the pudding and then the whipped on top, but this is how oh, it should be. This is better, yeah. This is much better, because when you put your spoon in to get that bite, it's gonna be a lovely dig. Oh, so yeah. mine is a Black Forest cake themed. Nice, mine would be, um, uh, what would mine be? Enchanted Forest, because I'm blueberry. Maybe. All right, so, uh, should I get a cleaner spoon? Because I'm using the whipped cream one. That's your call. It's a baking show. I thought I just felt maybe you wanted it a certain way. Hold on. I don't know. I'll use the cherry spoon. It looks less messy somehow. All right. Well, cheers. Virtual cheers, too. Mm. Ooh. Okay. I'm already excited. No. Gosh, it's like such a big spoonful, too. Should have gotten with a smaller fork. Mm. 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 I have to say the Greek yogurt with the honey, not so bad. No. No, that's great. No. This is so good. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> isn't, isn't it incredible how like freaking and what does this cost? Let me just break down the cost for my, my end. Yeah. I did a no name cake mix, so it's like a dollar. Mm -hmm. Which I mean, if I splurge an extra thirty cents, I could have gone to Betty Crocker or something, but like right. you know, why? Why spend the fifty cents or thirty cents? 
<laughs> where you don't have to. I already had a bunch of cans of pop, and I don't really like diet pop. I wasn't going to drink it. Yeah. I don't like diet colas. I like other diet beverages, but diet colas, uh, no. Yeah, I'm the exact same. I didn't notice I was buying diet. I just saw the cherry, and I was like, well, oh, that worked out yeah. for you because, like, you're not going to drink it, but if you put it into cake, then, you know. Yeah. But, yeah, so <clears throat> let's say I bought it from a convenience store for 50 cents. That's one fifty cake cake mix and like a can of pop for fifty cents. This yeah. whipped topping stuff is like three bucks for the whole thing. I haven't used the whole thing. Oh my god! <laughs> uh, like three, so four. That's four fifty, mm -hmm. and a fancy can of this is like three bucks. Yeah, under ten dollars. Yeah, the six fifty. You can make a large trifle and like have it at like a, as a potluck thing at a party. I should not be telling you this because I've been taking trifles everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I'm a baller on a budget, right? It's just, it looks fancy, but. Yeah, no. And no. the flavor combinations are endless. Literally. Such a good idea. You're a genius. Absolute genius. Along with, and I haven't made them yet, the uh, the poutine you mentioned when I did laughter luau. Oh, popper oh, poutine? No. Hello. Oh you can make gosh. that at home. Just order like pre-breaded like jalapeno poppers, yeah. get a can of gravy and some cheese curds and just go to town. You'll get, I mean, I'm just giving people advice on how to get super fat, but. Yeah. But, <laughs> a cookbook is what you need. We need I a think I'm going to be making one and like a little cooking show because this, this, yeah. this small version is so smart because I can make a whole bunch of these, put them in the fridge, like put a, like a lid on it and just like deal with it when it, instead of like having one giant trifle that I'm like, all right, everyone's got to. Gotta eat their share. <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of feel like you're just gunning for like Chrissy Teigen's like food empire. You're just gonna take over. <laughs> I, I thought she was a model. I know nothing about her. She's like so married to the singer, John Legend, right? Yeah, and she's got quite a food. Um, I'll, I'll send you her Instagram like, but she's got quite the food. Uh, she's got a cookbook. She's got her own little cooking demo she does on Instagram, but. I feel like, um, yeah, you just kick her, but this is, this is good. Yeah, I'm going to, Jared, can you pass me a smaller spoon? I just can't fit the spoon in my mouth. <laughs> this is a smaller spoon? Thank you. All right. This is more of a mouth side spoon. Like, this is what I was dealing with just a second ago. So it's like, it doesn't look that different, but it makes a difference in the mouth. It's true, and um, I have a tiny mouth, so this is some work, um, but that's okay. Oh, man, thank you so much for recommending this. Jesus. Mm, no problem. Thank effort. you for having me on your show where I get to just eat this. It's a great, it's a win-win, really, for everybody. <laughs>